Welcome to Monday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today and this week. And we are entering week number four in our series we've entitled The Born Supremacy. Now, if you're just now tuning in, you probably don't know where we got that title from. So you might want to go back and look at the previous three weeks and, and see what we said up until this point. But we are talking about looking into the Word of God to see how the body of Christ, the believers, the believing ones, such as you and I, have authority and dominion from God in this world. Now, I want to go back to the Gospel of Luke today, Gospel of Luke chapter 4, and look at a couple of scriptures here. This is in context of talking about the temptation of Jesus out in the wilderness when Satan tempted him out in, that, in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, what Satan was trying to do was to steal his identity. And he was presenting him certain things that he was trying to get Jesus to act on. And of course, Jesus always uh, counteracted him, combated him with the Word of God. And that's really our offensive weapon against Satan today is the Word of God. He always responded to it is written because the Word of God is the truth. And Satan, being full of lies, building his whole uh, kingdom on deception, has no answer for the truth of God's Word. If it's a lie, we always combat it uh, with the truth. And this is what Jesus did here. And I don't have time to read this whole story. Of course, I encourage you to do that but on your own. But uh, we want to just read just a couple of verses here in Luke chapter 4, verses 4 or 5 and 6. So let's look at verse number 5. It says, Then the devil, taking Jesus up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. Now notice verse 6, And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Now this is riddled with half-truths. You know, Satan is good at taking half-truths and twisting it around to make it appear to be something else. Let me tell you something right now. Satan had no nothing in his uh, idea and his plans to turn this over to Jesus uh, if Jesus obeyed him here. No, he, this was a trap that he set for Jesus. But it was also mixed with a half-truth. And this half-truth is, and I want you to see here, he, G, uh, the devil said to Jesus, all this authority I will give to you, not true. He says, and their glory for this, talking about this authority that he, that he has right here, he says, has been delivered to me. Now, when was that authority over this earth's realm delivered to Satan? Well, we've already seen the previous three weeks very clearly where he got it from. He did not get it from God. God did not give it to him. He said it was delivered to him. It wasn't given to him. It was not God's plan to turn the dominion, the authority of this earth's realm over to Satan, his arch enemy. So how did he get it and when did he get it? Well, we saw in Genesis chapter 2 and 3, particularly chapter 3, how he uh, got, uh, how he talked Adam and Eve into obedience to him. In other words, he presented them a lot of uh, deceptive half-truths, twisted things around, and they they bit the bait, so to speak. Before they bit the apple, they bit the bait of Satan. And they bowed their knee to Satan. We know this. We looked at this already and gave subservience to him. In other words, by obedience and yielding themselves to Satan's deceptive words, they basically made him the God and Lord over them. Now, how did they do that? Because they had free will. God gave them and made them agents of free will. But of course, with free will, there's always consequences. There's always accountability and responsibility for making the right decision. They made the wrong decision. They, through an act of their own will, they bowed their knee to Satan through obedience to him by yielding themselves to him and ate off of that forbidden tree that God said, do not eat off of. And when they did, they turned everything that God had given to them, everything that God entrusted to them, they turned it over to their new Lord, which is Satan. So this is what he is referring to right here, that this authority and this glory of this world, of this earth, was delivered to him. And again, God did not give it to him. 
You know, a lot of people have the wrong perception, the wrong idea of God or, or of Satan that he's on equal basis with God. He has all these godlike qualities and, you know, he's a, basically a God himself. No, we've already looked at the fact that he is a fallen angel. He was a created cherub. And, and to begin with, God created him perfect and blameless. But because he had an act of, uh, because he had his own free will, iniquity was found in him. He led an insurrection against God, a rebellion against God. And, and Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 17, 18, 19, he said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So that didn't last very long. So he became jealous, extremely green with jealousy when God created man and then gave him dominion and authority over this realm to rule and reign, basically. And uh, that's what Satan wanted all along. But he didn't get it that way. But he found a way. Uh, he found a plan. He, he concocted a plan whereby he could steal uh, Adam and Eve's identity, mankind's identity, and steal the dominion that God had given to him, to them, to all of us to begin with. Now, notice here, he says, all authority I, I, I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I will give it to whomever I wish. Well, he wasn't gonna give it to Jesus if Jesus obeyed him, not by any stretch of the imagination. Jesus, if he had, would have done this right here, he would have also became subservient uh, to Satan, turn his life and lordship over to him and that would have been the end for all of us right there. I'm glad that Jesus did not do that. And of course, again, Jesus resisted the devil by saying it is written. In other words, this is not true right here. But I wanted you to see that the authority and the glory, the dominion of this earth's realm was delivered to Satan uh, at this time. Now, going back over to Matthew chapter 16, Matthew the 16th chapter, again, we've looked at this the previous three weeks, how that uh, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? They gave him answer. And then he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter, being the spokesman, self-proclaimed spokesman for the group, uh, uh, spoke up and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, that's a correct answer right there. That's the right answer. And, uh, and so Jesus commended him. He said, uh, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. He didn't receive this by outside external information gained through the natural senses and natural reasoning, natural education. Nothing wrong with those things, but that's not how you're going to contact and know these truths and realities that we're talking about. It comes by different means. It comes by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, revealing these things to us. And he says, my father has revealed this to you. And he said, and you are Peter. He kind of renamed him right here. He said, you are Peter. In the Greek, that's a large piece of a big rock. You are a large piece of a big rock, Peter. And on this rock, the large, huge piece of, of rock, the, the huge rock that he was taken out of, and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So if Satan, listen, let's put these together right here. If Satan had, by deliverance, by Adam bowing his knee and delivering the authority, the dominion that God had given him over to Satan, how is that going to happen? How is this going to be a reality that Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades, the gates, the governments of hell itself will not be able to prevail against it? Well, there's something that was going to have to change right here in order to make this happen, in order to make this a reality. There had to be, first of all, a change in us. And we looked at that last week. We were held hostage. We needed to be redeemed. And Jesus himself came to pay the ransom for all mankind for all time. And he redeemed us with an everlasting, complete redemption. In other words, he purchased our freedom by that redemptive work that is already finished, that is already complete. Now I want you to see that that had to take place in order for Jesus to build his church, that the gates of hell, the gates of Hades, Satan being the head of, the, of that government that had been delivered to him, all that authority and all that power, how that was going to be restored back to the church again. Now, that, that had to take place right there uh, before, we could, the, the, before we could stand in that place where the governments of Hades would not prevail against us. 
And of course, we know by hindsight that the death, burial, resurrection, when Jesus was crucified, when he was buried, and when he was resurrected and ascended into glory, he restored back to the church, back to the body, back to us believers, the authority that the first Adam turned over and delivered unto Satan. So how do we know this? Well, after the resurrection, we'll just go, we're in Matthew 16 here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. This is what we call the, the Great Commission, part of the Great Commission here. We'll look at Mark, Mark's gospel in just a minute. But this is after Jesus was resurrected. This is after he went to the cross, paid the price for our ransom, our redemption, was buried and was resurrected on the third day. He appeared to his disciples. Verse number 16, Then the, the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into the mount which Jesus had appointed for them. When, he saw, when they saw him, he wor they worshipped him. But some still were in doubt, okay? Oh, they're kind of human like all of us. Verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, Now notice what he said to them here. And this is after the resurrection. He said, He spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and on earth. Well, you, it, there's something that happened between here and and what happened in the temptation in the wilderness in Luke chapter 4 when Satan said, I have the authority and the glory, the dominion of this earth, of this world. And he said, I'll deliver it to whomever I wish. It was delivered to me and I'll give it to whomever I wish. Well, let me tell you something. Satan, uh, uh, Satan did not give it to Jesus. Jesus came and, re and obtained it by conquest. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, he defeated Satan and all the governments of hell. He whipped and he stripped every single one of them. This is what we're going to be talking about this week. The complete victory of Jesus over Satan and the, by conquest, obtaining, receiving, and, and then notice right here in verse 19, he says, "...go therefore and make disciples of all nations." Notice that he turned and delegated that authority that had been given unto him. Who was it given to? Uh, why, how was it given to him? By conquest. Not because Satan all of a sudden had a change of heart and said, you know what, I'm going to give it back to, I'm going to give it back to man again. I shouldn't have done that to begin with. He didn't have a change of heart at all. What he would, what he would never have given this back up. He would never have relinquished this authority that he obtained from the first Adam. Jesus, the last Adam, came and whipped and stripped him, defeated him, and by conquest, he got it back. He obtained it. He earned it back through his death, burial, and resurrection. So Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me. All of it. All authority has been given unto Jesus. In other words, it no longer belongs to Satan here. It belongs to Jesus. And notice what Jesus did. In verse 19, he said, Go therefore, in other words, he delegated that authority back to his church, back to the body of believers. That's why he said in Matthew chapter 16, The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Th because he put the authority that he gained by conquest, all authority, in heaven and on earth, he gave it back to the church. Again, he delegated it back to the church. And then he gave us a responsibility to go into all the world and make disciples. Well, Mark's, Mark's gospel also goes into this chapter 16. Uh, let me just read this real quickly. I don't have a whole lot of time left. This is all part of this great commission. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's how we make disciples. And he, uh, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those that believe. In my name they will cast out demons. I want you to see that right there. The very first thing, very first sign that's going to follow us believers. This is not the only one he mentioned, but the very first one he says, he said, I will cast, you will cast out demons. How? In his name, using his authority, using the authority that he turned back over to the church once again, that he obtained by conquest from Satan in his death, burial, resurrection. Now, if we didn't have authority over the gates of hell, the governments of hell, we could not cast out devils. They would be sitting there lying. They would be sitting there laughing at us. But because they know, and we should know, that we have authority in this earth's realm in the name of Jesus, then we can cast out demons.
and of course other things go along with that. But uh, we don't have time to go into that. If you'd like additional resources and materials, particularly on this subject here, I do have a series by the same name, The Born Supremacy. I have online free audio download that you can go into our website, TonyCowan.org or Church316.org. Download that free of charge, and I go into a little bit more detail than I have time on these daily uh, devotionals. So I encourage you to do that. But uh, we're going to go into this some more this week about the victory of Jesus over Satan. I think it's going to be a real eye-opener and a blessing to you. Join us again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.